Okay, so I redrew it and I changed it quite a bit. And um, yeah, uh, and I made it I made it a little bigger. I decided I liked it better when I when I moved everything. And of course, then I wasn't in the same place I'd drawn it from originally. But I um, I liked it better, so I just I made it bigger and made the onions bigger. So now I'm just going to come back and try to make my colors better. And um, I'm going to start. Where am I going to start? By I'm going to start with the things I changed the drawing on so much because now I need to come back and uh, and do that again. Um, So now the inside of the bowl is is higher. Um, I am using some of the same colors I used before, but it's not really so much like I'm doing it on purpose. I just they're sitting here, so. And after you spray it so much, it doesn't, doesn't really even matter. They're like different colors anyway. Okay, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and put in these shadows right away too. I'm just going to, all the places I really changed the drawing, I'm going to go ahead and work on next. I made the onions bigger. So how far away you need to be from your still life just depends on how big it is. You know, this would be way too close if it was a giant still life. Um, but it's, it's not very big, so... Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use, use a little white on the white thing. <laughs> So when you're doing um, drapery, you've got, just a second, <laughs> evidently I couldn't speak and draw that line. Um, <clears throat> what you've got is like here, it's light, half light shadow, and then there's a cast shadow. And then after the cast shadow, the light starts crisp again. So to create a good feeling of shadow, you have to go I mean, of drapery and stuff, you have to think about those three things, that it's light, it's a soft turn, like on this edge, it's turning softly into the shadow, and this is a pretty hard edge right here, because it's a place the light starts again. You might not want that to be a hard edge, so you might decide not to do that. Um, and then the light is going to start crisply again right here past the cast shadow. And right here too. And it's, um, <clears throat> it's that combination of hard and soft edges 
in your uh, drapery that keeps it from looking, you know, too overstudied or like maybe sheet metal. So a contrast between the softness of the folds folding over and the, um, and the crispness, crispness of the light starting again after, after a cast shadow. a little greener again. It seems like So after I start my big pattern of light and dark, then what I'm starting to look for is, um, is nuances that will fit within that context of light and dark. So you, you can put as many colors as you want into an area as long as you keep the values kind of consistent. So um, on your values, he could you could say that like on the plate I'm not going to use any of these colors that I'm using in the light I'm not going to use them in the darks and I'm not going to use any of these dark colors in my shadows in the lights and that way my light and shadow will stay separate from each other and that is really what you're trying to achieve is a separation between the lights and shadows and the reason for this kind of lighting, um, which is, is basically Rembrandt lighting, is a light from the high, high, a little bit high and from the left or from the right, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. Um, the point of it is, is it's so easy to create, so much easier to create form when you have a strong pattern of light and dark with a strong light. It's very difficult to make things look round or have um, dimension when the light is just coming from the front and everything is very flat. So this is a setup. It also creates a lot of drama, which I like, um, but it's a, it's a setup that gives you the most chance that you're gonna be able to make things look round if, if that's important to you. And, um, what else was I going to say? So, so you, you get this. So, light and shadow are sort of like never the two shall meet. It's not like it's the light color. You know, these are complete, really different sets of colors here. It's white, light blue, violet, blue, dark blue in the shadow. Here, it's some sort of purpley brown. Here, it's kind of a golden. Um, tan or something. I'm actually it's a little hot, I think. I'll just tone that down a little. So anyway, try to keep your light and shadows really separate. And if you're having trouble making light and shadow, limit yourself. Tell yourself that's the rules. You can't use anything on the shadow side that you're using in the light and you can't use anything on the light sh side that you're using on the shadow. And, you know, that might not be a rule that you have to keep your whole life, but it's a good rule to start with um, if you're having that problem that you're not being able to get contrast between your light and dark. And think of them as two different families. It's not really just that. It's like all the lights on all these different objects have more in common with each other than the light and shadow on a single object. 
all the lights on all the objects are receiving light from my lamp, um, 200 watt incandescent lamp. And everything else is the absence of light. So the absence of light group have a lot in common with each other and the in the light group have things in common with each other. So if you can think about it, that you're painting light and dark and not just, um, you know, onions or whatever it is. Kind of harping on this because it's really important. And, you know, in oil painting, because you're mixing your colors on your palette, it's a little different. Like here, I might use some of that. I, that might be the same color, but because I'm using it in conjunction with the brown, it gets a little darker. Um, I, I, I'm going to see if I can lighten it up a little more here. So anyway, I've created this context, and now I'm going to work on... Uh, breaking it up and adding more variety and nuance and um, variations and all the fun stuff, like the fun. It's like, okay, now it's time for the fun. And if things get out of control and I lose a grip on it and it spins away from me, then the great thing in pastel is when you spray it, it takes it back down to that, um, that step where uh, of remassing it. You don't even have to, you don't have to work up the psychological nerve to paint out everything you already did because you can remass it with your fixative. No, I need a lighter green. <clears throat> and, you know, in some ways life would be easier if I had three different kinds of onions. Um, because then I wouldn't have to worry so much about trying to make them have different colors and look different from each other because they just would be. So here, the, the, the challenge when you have more than one thing that's the same, the challenge is how to show the variety between those things that are somewhat similar. And that is an excellent like set painting problem you can set for yourself is like set up a still life that has a lot of white objects or a lot of copper objects or, um, you know, just anything that's like that, that's the same, and, and see if you can make the variety between, between them. You know, and I'm not, you probably noticed, I noticed, um, I'm not even trying to make, like, the skin or anything. I'm not trying to do those little lines. I definitely see them there. I, I don't know if I'll ever do them. Um, I'm trying to get the spots of color. And it's funny, I'm just not even using kind of in a way my normal um, technique. I'm kind of more um, just using the flat side of my pastel to keep building it up. And you can ask yourself too, is like, how are you seeing little thing, different things? Like how, how do you see that, um, like what allows you to see that that little piece of skin is separate from the rest of the, of the surface? And if you ask yourself those kinds of questions, then um, I'm gonna use charcoal to do it. But one thing that allows, because I wanna draw it right, but one thing that allows me to see it is there's a tiny little edge
and then the actual light on the onion itself is is very bright right up to that edge. And then, um, you know, another thing that might help me is I might want to do um, that part of the skin that sticks up back there. That might help explain it, too. Wow, did not know that was, I'm putting that somewhere else, so I never picked that up again. Oh, it's really interesting, like the, even more than normal, I feel like I don't have the right colors in my box, because. Uh, mostly what I've been painting is landscape. So all the detail and stuff, there's, you know, I just can keep working on it. Detail is really not something just like completely different. It's, it's more the, the start. It's just doing smaller variations. I mean, ultimately, like if you're going to do the little, um, you know, the even if, say you're gonna do this, it's, it's not like the little things on the skin, it's not like you're doing something different. You're just doing the same thing. You're just making smaller color changes. Or, you know, if you wanna do the little um, place where it comes, where there's no skin on it, where it's a little, it's, it's just a smaller color change, it's not like all of a sudden you're doing some, it's a whole new world of what you're doing. It's just the same thing smaller. All right, well that was too much.
Okay, so somehow I've got to make that a little lighter in the distance there on the bowl. I have to say, this is pretty fun. <sighs> so the good news is my onions are dark enough because I can still make the highlights. And as always, it's just amazing what highlights do for you, huh? All right, and then there's just like a world of other stuff. So maybe I'll come back and um, work on this another time. But for now, my fingers are frozen. Um, so I think this is the one place I didn't mark back here. Maybe. And here again, this is the soft edge of the turn, and then this is the harder edge where the light starts um, fresh after the shadow. But I don't want to bring too much attention back there in the background, so I just kind of like the way this shadow, um, I was thinking it could just kind of lead you back. All right, I sprayed this for the second time, um, and now I'm just going to... Um, finish it. <laughs> so the finish is just more of the start. It's just carrying things further. It's picking certain areas to bring to a more finished stage. Um, I am going to have to work on all of it because I did just spray it so much, but, um, but maybe I'll work on some areas more than others. I was thinking it might be kind of nice to um, have some strokes that went across the form here instead of all these long skinny strokes I kind of got going. Um, that's one thing to remember always on drapery, well on anything, is that some strokes need to go with the form. Those are your drawing lines really. And then some things need to go over across the form because your picture, you know, everything in real life is turning in three dimensions. So it's turning this way as well as going that way. Um, yeah, okay. So I definitely want the plate to feel like it comes in front here. And then um, I'm going to start working on my edges too and just softening things. There's really no reason to show much detail down in here with edges. Just That could just be a kind of a throwaway place.
So a lot of times I'll draw like a little line like that, but then I, I try to sort of wiggle it in so it's not such an outline. So it looks more like part of the actual thing here and not so much of an outline. And I am going to have a highlight here. So I might as well get that in while I'm at it. See how I feel about it. It could have a little more yellow actually. Okay, and then Thing. It's really interesting. I feel like I've quit <clears throat> working so much with like a stroke. I I don't I don't seem to turn my pastels and just use the tips so much at all now. I mostly seem to be using the flat side. <clears throat> so I don't know. Things change. I do remember when uh, people that studied with them. Um, certain teachers for a really long time, how annoyed they'd get when the cha teachers changed the way they did things. Well, that was quite a bit lighter than I thought it was, but... So that's definitely too light, but I see. I kind of... see what else I can add to it. Having a really hard time drawing a drawing a line over here on the side. So I have to tell you, I'm not exactly making decisions. I'm just sort of looking over there and seeing things that kind of look cool to me, like I just noticed this stronger light back there and I thought, well, I like that. So I'm just um, putting some things in and kind of going to see how I feel about them. Um, you know, I might not keep all of them, but um, for now I just want to... I just want to see them. I'm having so much fun painting from life. I just can't believe I've been sitting down here painting from photographs all this time. <clears throat> and the other thing I can't believe is that I got rid of all my still life objects. What was I thinking? That was too much.
Okay, so I've been, you know, messing around with everything, but I've got I've got some pastel on everything now, and I can come back and just focus on these onions and uh, decide like how I want that to go. So, you know, this is the strongest light, so I'm, I think I'm going to try to, you know, just develop that a little more. It's already the eye catchingest thing. Um, and maybe I'll use some strokes, huh? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm actually not saying anything, just in case you wondered. <clears throat> just sitting here. So one nice thing that um, to do is to look, anytime you have a round piece of fruit, um, or like a pear, not just round, but is to look and see how you can create it um, by using a series of straight lines rather than just a circle. And the idea is that um, there's nowhere for the viewer's eye to focus if you just have a circle. That's one idea. And um, therefore, I don't know. They, anyway, so supposedly that kind of helps is that you, you create it with a series of straights and that gives the viewer's eye somewhere to focus along the way. I don't know why that is good or bad. But um, it's just a thought. But the other thing is, the truth is, these things that are organic that are not, you know, like a tennis ball, they're not really circular. And um, giving using a series of straights to make the shape, it seems to me like it gives you a more authoritative shape than when you just throw a circle. So like I, I might start it with a circle, obviously, just like that, but then I want to come back and I want to, um, yeah, look for that series of straight lines that'll start to make it look round. So this one, I want this one to come in front right here. Um, but I want it to be more out of focus down there behind. Um, oh, I knew something was wrong.
Oh shoot, God, this is, I don't know, it must just look so dark. And then that's the second time I've used it like that. Okay, but I want it, that's okay, it'll all be fine. I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not, but there it is. A few little roots. All right, and then I really want to try to pull the middle out of that, pull the middle toward me. Wow, I'm so cold. This is crazy. It's the wind is just howling here. It's amazing. Wow, I just can't find. I don't know what I'm looking for, but whatever it is, I can't find it.
Yeah, just having a hard time. that in there. All right, so I did I want to try to do a little on that edge there too, that little tail. <clears throat> and you know, I'm just always trying to figure out how little I can do. <laughs> Being, I guess, a very lazy person, just how little can I do to tell the story I want to tell, which is the story of the beautiful colors. And just a few little details seems like. <sighs> but this is this is going to need to be softer down in there. I feel like it looks like I didn't leave enough room for my uh, onion, like it can't really fit next to that rim, and I don't know, I don't know what the problem is exactly, why that seems like that. I did not really mean to do that. Alright, so that's all I'm going to do to it. So, um, yeah, not much talking, but uh, just trying to think. Okay, there you are. All right, that's it.